um, everybody has a different pattern for when they focus best. Maybe it's early morning, maybe it's mid morning, maybe it's afternoon, maybe it's at night. And so understanding that um, will help you organize your day and optimize your day. everybody, welcome back to NeuroPsyQ, the best place on YouTube to increase your neuroscience IQ. Today we are joined by Jamie Alders, Vice President of Product at Neurable. Welcome to the show, Jamie. How are you? Great. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thanks for coming. We're really excited to have you today. Um, before we get started, though, diving into the whole product, tell us a bit about yourself and how you got into all of this. Yes, uh, great. So yes, yeah, so my background um, is in consumer electronics. Um, I worked for Bose for 12 years in engineering and then product management uh, before joining Neurable about two and a half years ago. And uh, I think the way the way that I got into this field, into neurotech, so that my background is not in that space, it was in the audio space. Um, but uh, at the time, I had worked a lot with voice uh, voice interfaces, working on integrating Alexa and Google Assistant into some Bose products, and I saw how the, a new interface could um, really change an industry and, and create amazing experiences for customers. And uh, when um, when I sort of got exposed to neurotech, I saw a similar thing. I saw the opportunity for that similar thing to happen, where um, you know this is this could be a new way that we're going to. Um, interact with our technology, something that would add on to the other interfaces we have. Got really excited about that and um, and found a great opportunity at Neurable. So yeah, that's that's great. Um, just for the audience that may uh, not be familiar, uh, what is Neurable? What are their uh, kind of um, key um, uh, key product goals and uh, uh, consumer applications? Yeah, definitely. So. Um, Neurable is a group of scientists and consumer electronics veterans, uh, and so our, our goal is to make technology more accessible, intuitive, and empowering through products that use neurotechnology. Uh, so we're really trying to take um, the advances that have happened so far in neurotechnology and apply them in a way that anybody could use them, um, which is, you know, one um, which leads to our our a product that we just introduced recently, which is a pair of headphones with integrated EEG sensors in the ear cushions, um, no gel, no spikes. Um, it's just a, it's a product that you would use every day, like a pair of Bluetooth headphones, um, but has these new sensors integrated into them. Cool. So I guess that kind of marries your experience with Bose and designing uh, speakers to the work at Nurable. Um, could you tell us a bit about more about Enton and what the inspiration behind designing a device um, like Enton was? Yes, definitely. So I think the, the first part of it is uh, we want to create a device that anybody can use that's accessible price-wise, right? That's not going to be, you know, cost tens of thousands of dollars, only a lab could afford, um, that, that people want to be able to use every day that's comfortable. Um, specifically, Enten itself is about, uh, it's a smart pair of headphones that uh, is is for smarter focus. And so first and foremost, N10 is a great pair of Bluetooth headphones with noise canceling. And then on top of that, it has these EEG sensors integrated in the cushions um, that measure your brain waves. And so, and the N10 app then gives you insights into your work habits, um, similar to how a fitness tracker might give you data about your physical activity. And the goal there is to make, to give you information so you can make better decisions. Um, I'll kind of go into the sort of why, why focus and why this particular product. And that's because in the past few years, um, there's been a collapse in work-life balance. There's been a lot of burnout, um, this new idea of Zoom fatigue. You know, at the end of the day, do you wanna be looking at a Zoom screen uh, anymore? Everyone wants to kind of close that laptop. And so, um, and so really, and the pandemic has amplified that trend. So we built N10 to help people understand sort of where they focus best, when they focus best, so that they can make these decisions about their work habits. And the idea at the end of the day is not to, so people can work more. The idea is so that people can be more efficient so that the, so that you can win back time, like, you know, get your work done so you can spend time with your family or friends or, you know, tackle one of those hobbies. Yeah, that's, um, that's really, that's really interesting. Before we, um, I, I just want to take a, a, a sidestep because I think this is important. Before we actually talk about the um, kind of concentration benefits of uh, antenna, I, I, I really like the, um, 
the inspiration to build, um, kind of retrofit this new technology into something that um, uh, people are putting on their heads um, on a regular basis. Like you said, most of us uh, have earphones in all the time because we, we, we've been, we started doing a lot of EEG work and we're, 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 um, we're using um, uh, the, you know, the Muse headband and the, the Epoch X um, as a kind of um, tool to um, um, diagnose diseases. So the idea is that if uh, people would wear these devices on a regular basis, we can kind of uh, monitor their brain activity and how it changes with time um, and see if there's a kind of, uh, we can use EEG signal as a biomarker of disease. And, and the feedback that we get is, um, this is a really interesting idea, but who's going to want to wear this, this headband on your head? Like this is not going to be something people are going to reliably wear uh, for this type of purpose. So I think um, uh, I really like the concept of retrofitting things that are already on our heads as the kind of EEG device itself. I think that's, that's, that's really brilliant uh, uh, um, kind of solution to this uh, aesthetics problem. Who's gonna, who's gonna adopt something that uh, is on their face? It's, uh, it's such a critical part of our, our day-to-day -day lives. We don't wanna tamper with it too much. Yeah, exactly. I think that was our thinking that uh, we wanna make it as seamless for customers as possible. And so, you know, a lot of my background is thinking about those customer experiences. And so thinking about, an, uh, you know, any, any person um, who is really interested in, in, in um, getting data about their brain or, get, or getting health benefits um, from understanding um, and tracking uh, whether it's brain disorders or, or you know, um, all, the, all the opportunity that there is in neurotechnology and BCI and trying to make that simple for people to be able to not have to think about a different kind of device. Um, uh, do I, what am I charging? I have to charge this headband, I have to charge a, you know, uh, some device people, a lot of people, you know, it's hard for them to remember to charge these devices. So, so putting it into a device that lots and lots of people use every day, headphones uh, makes it really easy. And then, and then I think the other challenge is making it um, comfortable and affordable. So it's not just the, the making a headphone, but also making a headphone that uh, that people want to wear. They don't look at it and say, this looks like a torture device, or what about gel, or all these, these kind of things that are more objectionable. We want to make it really, really easy for people. Put, all the, head, put the headphone on and, and, and get going and not, um, not have objections. So that's what we really strove for with N10. And the design, the design is really cool. I uh, watching the videos, uh, it does look something uh, very pleasing to the eye. So, um, great! I'm glad uh, you like it. Good job on the design. Thanks. Yeah. We had some great partners that we worked with on that who uh, who designed headphones before. Yeah, and then, uh, go ahead, go ahead, Christina. It's okay. <laughs> um, I was going to say, obviously, a lot of thought went into because it's a very thoughtful design, and it like they look cool. So it's something that anybody would buy and they wouldn't be embarrassed to be wearing and walking around with that on their head. Um, but when can the public get their hands on it? Because you have this device now and it looks cool. People are excited about it. So um, when will we be expecting to be able to purchase it? Great, yes, so for people in the US and Canada, they can go to Indiegogo now and place an order. Um, if you place an order now, it, you will get your product in May of 2022. So it's gonna be a little bit of time. We have we're, we have to uh, take the prototypes we have now and, and uh, there's a bunch of work to do to, to make it into the final product. Um, but uh, but uh, if you're interested, go there. And also uh, people who do back us in the Indiegogo campaign will be able to get early access to beta programs and other other exclusive information and, and content and demos and things like that. So that's exciting. For those who can't, uh, don't, don't, you know, aren't able to participate in the campaign now, um, uh, we will be introducing it more broadly in the fall of next year, fall of 2022. And also we're hoping to be able to get it to other countries as well. We've got a lot of people in other, other countries outside the US and Canada who are really interested um, and wish we could get to those two as soon as, you know, sooner, but we'll get those as soon as possible into other markets. Yeah, and just, um, again, just for our audience, what, what's the general premise of the kind of um, first um, use? How, how would 
how would someone benefit from having an EEG sensor in their in their headband? Like, how what's the what's the um what what's the kind of home run application that uh, people will benefit from? Yeah. So. Um, so the N10 is going to give you information about your focus throughout the day and how that's useful is I'll just give you one example. There's a bunch of different ways that we, we, we use um, N10, um, but one example is um, everybody has a different pattern for when they focus best. Maybe it's early morning, maybe it's mid morning, maybe it's afternoon, maybe it's at night. And so understanding that um, will help you build uh, organize your day and optimize your day. Maybe uh, maybe the morning is when you focus best. So that's when, like clear your schedule so that you can do your deep work then. And then the afternoon, maybe you're a little sluggish after lunch. That's kind of the way I am. Um, then uh, then you know plan some meetings, do some things. You know don't don't plan that time to do that individual focused work. Plan other activities. Uh, even maybe go to the gym uh, or or do some physical activity. So having that information about just the time when you focus best can be really valuable. Um, also, N10 will be able to give you information about you know, where you focus best. If you if you can specify, you know, I'm in the, I'm at home, I'm in an office, or I'm at a coffee shop, um, and that that's sort of that's one benefit of looking at your focus over over a time period. Um, there's other a bunch of other benefits. Um, I don't want to get into all of them, but one of them I think is is exciting is that they're headphones and you listen to music using them. So, so if, if certain playlists that you have, maybe you use Spotify or something, certain playlists um, help you focus better, uh, N10 will know that. You can say, oh, looks like when you listen to this playlist, you focus really well. So when it comes time to picking music, that might, be, that might come up as a recommendation at that time. That's really interesting. And I, like, I'm just excited myself because I think it would be really applicable to me like when I study, I, I listen to music and I think I know which music helps me focus. I've made a playlist called study music, but it would be cool to see if my insight actually matches up to what the N10 would predict as well. And then again, I think focus management is so important. Like we talk about time management, but you can, you can make a day plan, but it might not be working for your attention. So this would be really helpful. Um, but when you first put the Enten on, is there any sort of calibration that needs to happen or does it just work right away? No, there's, uh, there's no calibration needed, which is great. Uh, you know, th there will be a screen in our, in the Enten app where you can check to make sure the sensors are making good contact, uh, because the, the contact is right around the ear. So if you have a lot of hair, you might want to pull it back a little bit. Um, but, uh, we, we, we've, the, the development that the team has done, that the engineering team has done, um, first started with some assumptions that we might need some calibration and then luckily moved past that. And so uh, we, have, uh, we have a technology that doesn't require uh, you to do a lot of calibration before getting started. That's awesome. That really makes it more user friendly. Are the electrodes just like around the ears or is the whole band over the head have electrodes? There's no electrodes in the band. It's just around the ears. Uh, we use uh, fabric conductive fabric uh, that we've we woven into the, the ear cushions themselves. So if they just kind of look like a regular ear cushion and just we just have to make sure you get contact right around behind your ear and around your ear, it actually goes all the way around the ear so we can get lots of different points. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so, uh, so they're right there. And then um, we've gotten a lot of questions about, hey, are you able to get frontal cortex information? And, and, uh, and we've done a bunch of experiments um, that show that we are able to get that, in, that information from different parts of the brain from around the ear. Um, we, we have some great signal processing and, and, and other techniques to really help hone in on the, the, the signals we need, um, even if the locations of the electrodes aren't ideal. That's awesome. The, um, yeah, that's, um, um, I never thought of that too. Um, you know, one of the, um, one of the challenges we've had with some of the other, um, EG headbands we've tried is that, um, um, they seem to have an unfair advantage for people with short hair, you know, like someone like Christina that has a lot of hair. Uh, she sometimes doesn't get good contact, but I guess the ear is, is interesting because it's a, it's an area of our head where um, uh, consistently there's not a lot of uh, uh, hair, uh, you know, males may have sideburns and, and, and clean up that area. And, you know, at, at least uh, females can, or people with long hair can, can put it around their ears. So it is a, it's an optimal location to have uh, uh, sensors as well, which uh, I, I think is uh, cool. I guess um, um, that's another advantage of uh, uh, this sort of product. One, um, 
you know, one interesting thing uh, that, I, that I find fascinating with these types of technologies is that, um, you know, you, you kind of have a, um, you know, a, kind of a first application that you can think of, but I think the, the real exciting thing uh, I, I want our viewers to understand is that um, as these become more and more accessible and we, um, you know, we, we use these more and more, it could be that there's more interesting applications that uh, arise from now having all this data. So um, I was thinking about what you were saying and um, you wonder if, um, you know, you're getting this, you're getting all this information. I, I was, I was kind of joking with my, with my lab. Uh, we were telling them that we're going to interview you guys. Uh, and I was saying that I was going to buy everyone a headset. And so um, they would have to put it on during their um, lab, to, during our lab meetings. And I would be able to, to check if they're um, uh, focusing on what people were saying or if they were dozing off. So um, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, uh, interesting applications, of course, uh, not just for um, big brother monitoring, but uh, that you can see kind of sprouting out by collecting all this data, you know, and that, uh, that, I think that's the exciting thing. We can't sometimes can't predict what the um, um, what the future applications are. We just have to kind of uh, come across them by accident. Yeah, exactly. And just to, to note that, you know, at, at Neurable, we, we, we don't want our headset to be used to be monitoring people. We don't want like, you know, some company to say, everyone needs to wear these and we'll, we'll figure out if you're paying attention or how much you're focusing. We really want this, the intent to be something that each individual who buys it says, I really want to get this information about myself so I can be, be a better person, be a better, you know, be more efficient, accomplish my goals, things like that. Um, but about the, about the future applications, there are lots. Um, EEG sensors can do a lot of different things. And so, you know, we're really focusing on this first application focus so we can create a great experience for customers and help people. Um, but you know, down the road with the same hardware, we could, we, with, through software updates, um, we can measure other cognitive states. Um, and one thing I'm excited about sometime in the, in the future is um, something we talked about a little bit earlier, which is uh, monitoring for health conditions and helping people with conditions like ADHD, concussions, um, Alzheimer's. There's a lot of things that we could do, um, but I think a little bit more, a little more work has to get done before we're, we're ready for that. But, uh, but I, I see that on the horizon and I'm excited about it. Yeah. yeah. Another, uh, just, uh, just a final point before we, um, we let your team in. Um, you know, I, I wonder if there's, um, I wonder if there's a application in music um, uh, com composition too. If we think about uh, if you're collecting all this data while people are listening to music, we could potentially find uh, interesting notes uh, that are really effective at uh, uh, being pleasing to the ear. So I wonder if we can almost uh, improve the way we're synthesizing music by uh, by kind of uh, using the kind of human creativity, but also adding some data driven um, kind of extra notes or, or certain tones that uh, are pleasing to the ear or, or increase focus or relaxation. You know, I, I wonder if uh, um, it will change the, the way we write music, not just listen to it. De definitely. I think that there's a lot of applications in music and art, um, things that people we're going to find out once people get there, you know, people start tinkering and getting more, getting more experience with, with the technology. So I'm excited about that too. Yeah, for sure. Even music therapy, like they could check and see if it's actually effective on people by measuring the brain waves. But I'm sure everybody's excited to uh, see the antenna and find out more about it. So I guess we'll let the team in and we'll have a look. Great. All right. So while, while they're joining, um, I'll give you a little bit of a, a overview. Oh, there's Mavi. Hello. Um, Hello. All right, well, while, while the team gets ready and sets up, uh, James is going to be wearing um, a prototype of N10. And, um, and so he's going to be doing uh, a Stroop task, which some people may be familiar with, some people might not be. Um, Stroop task is a pretty common task for, uh, for scientific experiments. It really helps you focus or requires that you focus rather because uh, when what happens with the Stroop task is there's a word on the screen that could be a word like blue but it might be in red ink. And so your brain sees the word, but sees the color and gets a little bit confused and you have to really focus to, to say the right thing. Uh, and so, so during the task, if the word blue comes up in red ink, you need to 
press the button for red. Um, and so that will help James sort of make sure that he's focused. And then what we're going to do is we're going to introduce some distractions um, into the mix. So just these distractions might be something that you might be familiar with, like you're trying to do work and then a um, and then a, a text message comes in or a Slack message comes in and it's that message you've been waiting for is from your boss or something where you have to turn your focus away, answer a question, then come back. So uh, and so what we'll see is we'll see in the in the data plot, which um, the team's going to pull, pull up in a minute, uh, you'll see the immediate effect of that distraction, uh, which you'll see with those, the red bar will appear when there's a distraction. And then you'll see that your uh, James's focus drop in the plot. Um, when we get started, I'll give you a little bit more orientation. Um, but here's James. Wave to us, James. Hey, James. There he is. Hi, James. All right, he's wearing a prototype headphones and uh, he's hooked up to the, um, there they are, and he's hooked up to the, the demo. And on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see, um, you'll see the plotter, which uh, we, will, we will get started. In the plotter, the line, when it's high, it means James is focused. When it's low, it means he's not. So I'm going to put on headphones so James won't be able to hear you so that you don't, uh, we don't distract him while he's doing the task. All right, oh. so here's the plotter. You can see the blue line. Mm -hmm. And we'll wait a few moments for James to get in the zone. Okay, you can see his focus going up as he starts the task. And while we're waiting for that first distraction, I'll also add that you'll see that when, when James is distracted, his, his focus will drop and then it'll take him 10 to 15 seconds to recover. And so that lost time is sort of a, a you know, switching cost for, for, for distractions that might come in when you're working um, in your everyday activities. So there's a distraction, there's the red bar. He's got to answer a question on the screen. So it's kind of like mimicking the workplace. If you get an email, you're doing something, you get an email and then you're distracted. Exactly, and you see his focus dropping there, it's still dropping, he's not, he's got to get back in the zone before the next distraction. All right, now he's going, he's back focused again. Here comes a phone call, he's got to dismiss the phone call. Now you can see the loss of focus. Another one. To be very uh, uh, interesting data to share with uh, many organizations because this is kind of our day-to-day -day workflow and uh, it's amazing how much productivity we're losing all these dips uh, uh, and I know I get many hundreds of these a day so uh, <laughs> especially right. now with the pandemic too definitely and one of the features I didn't talk about earlier is the idea here's another phone call one of the features I didn't talk about earlier is the idea that when you are when your focus is high we can automatic n 10 can automatically turn off some of those some of those notifications mute some notifications like slack to avoid these distractions in the first place well, that's cool. You don't even need to have self-control anymore. <laughs> I think that's really good because a lot of times when I'm studying or doing work, I have to put my phone on do not disturb. Otherwise, yeah, you're like, <laughs> you get stuck like James. Exactly. And do you, um, I'm just curious about the, the Stroop test. So is he answering when it says correct? Is he is he answering with a keyboard or or with his mind or? That's right. He's using um, using four keys, just really easy on the home row: D, F, and J, and K. Um, one corresponds to each of uh, four colors. And we do you don't notice? Want, sorry, go ahead. We also don't want too much, you know, like physical activity. Um, uh, because we want to show that that we're measuring brain activity and not movement. So the idea is to um, to to make it very very low movement uh, for him to respond. 
and I guess just for the user, uh, just for the viewers, um, I guess there's two components to this test. There's when the color matches the text and when the color is discordant with the text uh, color. Uh, do you notice any difference in brain activity when um, there's congruency or dis uh, discongruency between the uh, what's displayed on the screen? Absolutely. So actually that specific effect is what we use to train the data uh, for this model. Um, so we had uh, we had tasks where um, where there were more or less congruent um, or incongruent uh, uh, trials instances. And so um, and so what we see is we see that uh, when there's less um, when there's less incongruency, <laughs> when there's more congruency, um, then then uh, then you know it, it's it's much easier to focus. There's less um, there's actually less cognitive load, less uh, less uh, activity that you you know really need to work to focus. And then when the when the incongruency goes up, when you have you know the word red and blue ink, for example, then uh, your brain has to work harder um, to uh, to respond and to stay focused. And so those are, um, those are, that's something that's, that was a, a lot of, we did a lot of experimentation with just that, no distractions before we, we introduced distractions into our experiments. Amy, can we do the interactive demo now? Uh, which demo? So we, this time I won't put the headphones on. So Felia and Christina can talk with James if they want to. Oh, sure. Yes, let's do, uh, this is the uh, demo difficulty level two, which is uh, uh, you can distract James now and see if we can get him to get, get distracted from the task. So I would ask you guys to first uh, let him get into the zone. Uh, okay. We are going to start the second block of Stroop. And then when you see fit, please ask him questions. Okay. Make the questions tricky for him to answer. So he's got to think about it. Getting started now, here we go. Will he talk back to us? Is that the idea? Yeah. Yes. So while James is getting, oh, I'm probably distracting him now. Go. Okay. <laughs> so, are you doing a Stroop task right now? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is a fun one. How For many sure. times have you done the Stroop test before? Um, quite a few times. Quite a few times for sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh... What um on, on the screen here it says get yours igg.me is this something that we could navigate? Oh, yeah, through? that's the Kickstarter campaign. I so oh, I see. Pre-order. Okay. So this is where viewers can go to um uh to reserve their uh their headphones uh for the early launch. Oh yeah, exactly. That's the link to the Indiegogo page. Are the different colors available? Yes, there are three colors. Do you want James to answer that? <laughs> sure, yeah, you can the, show them the, too. The three different colors, red, or not red, oh my God. Um, white, <laughs> charcoal, and olive. Oh yeah, oh yeah. My favorite's the white, I think. <laughs> are they comfortable? Oh yeah. And is it like the Stroop test? If I order white, may I get, uh, may may all of come in the uh, the mail or? <laughs> it is not like the shrimp test. No, good question. Though. Although you gave me a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> the mystery color. You can add a third color, and they just get a random one that you send. It looks like he stayed pretty focused. Oh yeah, I'm I'm good at ignoring distractions. Man. Too too good at ignoring. <laughs> Why are you so good at? Ignoring distractions. I don't know. I people try to distract me a lot, you know. Yeah. I don't I don't mean to alarm you, but there's a, a pretty large creature on the wall behind you. Um 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding around. Um, what's the highest uh, uh, level of concentration uh, you can hit? Is it 0.8? Is that the um, upper limit? The algorithm goes from zero to one, but we never hit zero or one. Hmm. And do you find uh, certain um, if you if you change the your office space uh, does it does it make a difference or for the uh, we haven't done too many different settings uh, like in different locations so we're usually testing in the office as of right now but we definitely see uh, a difference in tasks with distractions and tasks without distractions oh yeah. One experiment we did was to change the background for this troop task. So right now you're seeing there's no background, it's just gray, but mm -hmm. we have uh, different backgrounds. Uh, some are more busy than others to, to create more noise and dissonance. Um, and so we, we were able to see uh, differences in your, in your performance on the task and your brain activity, depending upon the background. If there's a lot of activity, there's a, a market scene where you're going to the market, everyone's kind of looking at you and there's a lot going on. Um, we see a, a difference between that and uh, and a blank background or even a, a calm, you know, calm scene. Cool. So if you, if you look at this chart here, this is really interesting too. Um, if there were no distractions at all, you might imagine the, 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 the plot would be, you know, pretty, pretty straight across, but you also can see that, um, that each time there was a, a, a uh, distraction we see a little bit of a, a drop in the in james's focus on the right hand side when we were distracting him uh, a lot uh, you can see even less uh focus that that sort of area under the curve right is less that the the, the curve never gets or doesn't get as high very often well thanks for the demo yeah that's yeah we it's have like... here the the headphones that you can get at indiegogo <laughs> Okay, so that's, that's the olive. That's cool. This is the charcoal. That's the gray. Charcoal, and charcoal, charcoal. I think James was holding the olive in the other screen. That's, that's white. the white. That's the white one. Oh yeah. Colorblind. I wouldn't be good at this stroop test. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little colorblind too, actually. Just a little bit. Can't really tell the difference. Yellow and green is tough for me. <laughs> Are I, yellow and green any of the colors in the stroop test? No, no. These ones we try to we can customize the colors, so we try to make that you can differentiate. Okay, so they're not making it too hard for you. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I like the pro I like the probes. Like they almost look like they're part of the uh, design. Like it makes it uh, it makes it actually look really, really cool. Um, some sort of pattern finish. Uh, oh yeah. If you if you didn't yeah, tell me there was probes there, I thought that that was what the kind of designer would have uh, put there just to give it a unique look. So absolutely. Uh, very yeah, it's nice because they don't look like anything too extreme. It's just headphones. Exactly. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we're going for it. And uh, go to Indiegogo, order N10. Uh, the price is $1.99 to order now. Uh, the retail price will be $3.99 when we introduce them um, uh, broadly. So if you want to pay half price, order now. Yeah, and that's not bad at all considering like other headphones that don't have EEGs built in. It's a pretty good deal. Yeah, I was, uh, to be honest, I, I was scared past the price because, um, <laughs> you know, just getting an EEG headband uh, costs more than that. And, uh, you know, a, a set of uh, a set of good, good Bluetooth speakers can, can run you. So that, that's a very, um, that's a very attractive price point. Um, so yeah, that's, that's great that you guys can uh, get it to the consumer at that price. Yeah, and I guess it goes back to the whole goal of your team to make user-friendly devices. There's no point making something that people can't afford. So good for you guys. Thank you. That's right. We want to make this technology accessible, and uh, someday we'll hopefully make the price bring the price down even more. But uh, but this I think is a is a good a good entry price point where where it can be accessible to many people, and uh, we want to get it accessible to all people um, uh, in the future. For sure. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Um, thanks for the demonstration too, and uh, all the best with the future of the product. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thanks guys, that was great.